Uh, it is dank. It is really, really dank. I don't know what they're saying about Angola with that. That's up for you to decide. <laughs> Beer lovers, welcome to another episode. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacob. I'm Justin. Today we are in Inglewood, California, the city of champions for Three Weavers Brewing Company. Now this place is off the hook. We know that because they have been around for over three years and that's some of the best press and some of the best beers told, told all over SoCal. And I can't wait to get in there and try them. So if you guys are ready. I'm ready. Let's have some beer. Let's have some beer. guys so today's history lesson I could go many different ways I could talk about you know the history of Inglewood you know being the city of champions home of the fabulous forum right up the stairs up the street from LAX I'm not gonna go that way I could talk about how they got their name you know the owner named it after their three daughters hence the name three weavers but a little too short a little too sweet about that what I really want to talk about is what everyone talks about when it comes to this brewery it's the strong pedigree of its owner and its brewmaster some of the best people in the beer business today have been in business for over three years at this brewery, have won numerous, numerous different medals. And oh yeah, by the way, they're both women. That's the thing. I mean, some of the best beer comes out of here from Southern California, and these are some of the best beer people in the business. They just happen to be women. They're not some of the best women brewmakers, brewmasters. These are some of the best brewmasters in the country. They just happen to be women. That's your history lesson. I can't wait to try these beers. That's why it's short, let's get to it. All right guys, my first beer is gonna be Travel by Map. Always my favorite way to travel. My, the Muppet's favorite way to travel. And this, at 9.4%, will definitely have you be traveling by map. This is a collaboration with Urban Roots based out in Sacramento, California. And clear, crisp, clean. I can't wait to try it guys, awesome. cheers. Ooh. Well, this is the spot. Wow. Whew. There's not a lot of malt presence to it. It has a body, but it's not like overly body bodacious. I don't feel weighted down by this beer. What I get is a big punch of bitterness right as you taste it, and that's the 9.4% there. It's a little bit of the alcohol, it's a little bit of the hop bitterness. Mm. But it's really refreshing, it makes you want to come back for more. You get these like salty, fruity little undertones to it, but still just a really solid, strong beer. Maybe not the best way to start out a beer session, but definitely one of the ways you want to finish it. Well guys, my first beer up is gonna be a collaboration beer as well. It's actually a collaboration beer with Green Cheek Brewing. You guys may be familiar with them. Evan Price, the, the king of noble, uh, he's what put him on the map. I haven't even gotten a chance to go to Green Cheeks Brewery yet, but I'm trying their beers at festivals and now I get to try one that's a collaboration with Three Weavers here. It's an 8% double IPA. It's got a beautiful light color to it. It's a nice break from those hazies we've been having lately. Let's dig in, cheers. This is a very typical West Coast style beer. You get a little bit of fruity, get a little bit of that piney earthiness, and then you get a nice dank finish. 
You know, John and I did Acoustic Ales, and they had a really nice West Coast IPA as well. And these kind of beers are just a reminder that, you know, the West Coast is still the best coast. Like, these West Coast style IPAs are going to outlive just about any other beer fad that's out there. It's good, and it's good every time. Love it. Cheers. All right, so my first beer at uh, Three Weavas is going to be Naughty IPA, um, which is a double IPA. Perhaps that's why it's so naughty. It's going to really mess me up. <laughs> Um, so if you hadn't guessed already, Three Rivers is kind of known for the West Coast style IPAs. Much like Noble Ale Works is in Orange County, Three Weavers kind of dominates the West Coast in LA. Um, I've been wanting to actually come to their proper brewery for a while as opposed to having them out and about. So it's kind of nice to actually be on location and have this. Cheers! It's sweet, kind of fruity, but also a bit dank, and it just hits all those like West Coast IPA notes. It's definitely a bigger beer. This is definitely a uh, double IPA, um, but it's not too overwhelming, but it definitely is something that you know is gonna carry that weight of a double. Um, yeah, this is nice. It's, it's been probably way too long since I've had a beer in this range. Uh, so cheers for taking me back. Alright guys, so I have here the Inglewood IPA. It's 7.8%, uses uh, Yukonot, Mosaic, and Idaho 7 hops. And when we're talking about Inglewood, you know, Lakers, Forum, gonna be the Rams and the Chargers soon. And what better place to get grab a beer than here? Pre-gaming, a concert, pre-gaming, a football game, pre-gaming your flight across the world. This is just the best place to pre-game in Inglewood and the Inglewood IPA is here for you. Cheers. Packs a punch at 7.8%, guys. Uh, it is dank. It is really, really dank. I don't know what they're saying about Inglewood with that. That's up for you to decide. But it's dank, it's resinous, and it packs a punch. That being said, if you like dank beers, definitely, definitely want to try this. It is really, really good if, if you love the dank flavors. For me, Mm, probably not my bag, but still really really good for what it is. All right guys So the next beer up is a stout. It's called South Bounder coffee stout It's made with North Bounder coffee, and uh, it's seven percent um, It'll be a nice break from all these IPAs that we've been having so here we go. Cheers. Oh baby Mmm Oh, man. Mmm. Oh. Oh, man. All I gotta say is it's straight up coffee. But straight up delicious coffee. Holy crap. So, I've never had North Bounders coffee. And I, honestly, I don't know coffee like I know beer. But what I will tell you is this is freaking delicious. If you have a friend that's not into beer, but they're into coffee, this is what you want to hand them. This is exactly what will turn them to the dark side, pun intended. Uh, wow, it's super drinkable. This is like a breakfast out for me. I mean, if I want to wake up and start my day and I don't have to drive anywhere, but I want to be productive, boom, South Bounder Coffee Stout. This is great. Oh my God, oh, you guys got to try this. Here it is. See this? This is what it's all about, kids. This is the Seafarer. It's 4.8, it's a Kolsch, it's 4.8%, it's a Kolsch style ale, and this won the silver medal at the Great American Beer Fest this past year. This is one of the beers that they've come, become well known for, and it's some heavenly stuff. Cheers. Yeah, there's something about a really good coal style beer or a light beer that you just take a deep breath and just relax. This is, that's exactly what it is. It's re relaxation in a glass. Chilling at the beach, perfect beach beer. I can't think of anything better to drink. And you can see why this thing has won so many awards and the prestigious awards that they are. Well done, guys.
All right, so right here I have stateside session IPA. This is at 4.5% ABV, right in that sessionable range. It is ridiculously clear, which is just a testament to the quality brewers at Three Weavers. And this particular session IPA is kind of modeled as a mix between a British style pale ale and a old school West Coast IPA. So let's kind of see where they mean the middle. Really nicely, as it turns out. <laughs> um, there's that nice, slightly bitter, slightly sticky, resinous quality of that West Coast IPA, and it's kind of backed up by a nice, full malt character. Um, not overly malty, not something that's like, um, you know, it's not like a bad old school East Coast IPA before they learned how to do uh, proper IPAs. <laughs> um, this is definitely a nice. This is a really good sessionable IPA, actually. I tend to kind of be iffy about them because a lot of times they be, they're watery or they're not enough uh, hop character and they're just kind of meh. Um, this is something that's I would recommend, honestly. This is pretty good. <laughs> um, I might have to try it another again. Well, the next in the lineup is another IPA. This is called Expatriate. It's 6.9%. It's a typical West Coast style IPA. So it fits right in line with some of these other ones here. One thing I will say is if you love IPAs, this is a great place to be, man. <laughs> We're having a lot of them, so here we go, expatriate, cheers. This is actually more of a like modified version of a West Coast IPA. Um, in the actual body, I'm getting more like tropical fruits, like a pineapple mango more than I am citrus. But you still get that piney, danky finish at the end as well. It's actually really, really good. It's not overdone on the dank. Uh, it's not overdone on the pine. I'm getting like a strawberry flavor as well. Strawberry, maybe raspberry, something like that. Mmm. That that's really good. Uh, when it comes to the West Coast that we've had here so far, I would say this one's my favorite. All right guys, so my final beer here is gonna be the Deep Roots. It's 5.2% in ESB, and I seem to be getting all the like the hometown ones, Inglewood, Deep Roots. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just saying like, Inglewood's my home, L LA's my home, which it is. So, what better way to celebrate than the Deep Roots I have, and the Deep Roots of this beer. Cheers. It's a great ESB. It, you get this good multi body. There's a little touch of danky resinous on the back end, uh, which I've kind of come to see, which I've kind of come to expect with all their beers. But it's not bad. It's great. It's unexpected. You get this great multi presence, a little bit of a bitter finish, and then it just just coats your tongue. Just makes it feel like makes kind of gives your mouth a nice warm hug. That's what it is. A nice warm hug for your mouth. Excuse us while we get a little bit more into it. All right guys, so my last beer here at Three Weavers is gonna be Midnight Flight, an Imperial Stout at 9.5%. It's probably not what you wanna have if you have a Midnight Flight at LAX, because <laughs> um, you won't be able to make it there. But I definitely do wanna have a flight today, and I'm totally in the mood to try this beer, so let's go in. Don't be jealous. Wow, you just get hit in the face with just dark cocoa, dark chocolate, <laughs> just right up on the nose. Man, it's got just such a rich depth of chocolate to it. <laughs> you really taste, it's a big beer for sure, but there's just a plenty of rich chocolate quality to it to back it up. Um, it doesn't feel, Woo. <laughs> it lingers on your tongue quite a bit and I kind of like that. Um, I'm really curious to see if they do any coffee with this uh, because, oh man, that'd be great. <laughs> Um, you would also, that would then go from Midnight Flight to a Red Eye, which is also perfect right in their naming uh, nomenclature, so why not do it? <laughs> uh, this is a really big ass stout and it's pretty good. <laughs> so I gotta say, thank you Three Weavers for mixing it up, especially if you come here and have a flight like we did. You're in for a lot of dank, resinous IPAs. These uh, nice big stouts really go a long way to break up uh, your palate from all the hops. So I'm, I'm enjoying this. Thank you guys. Well guys, we're down to our last beer of the night. I couldn't leave here without trying this one. 
It's an Imperial Red Ale, and I know John is probably going to hate me for drinking this without him. It's called Blood Junkie. It's an 8.7% Imperial Red Ale. I've seen the bottle designs. Guys, it, <laughs> it looks like a freaking demon is gonna jump out at you and eat your soul and then pour beer down your mouth, I guess. I don't know. But regardless, uh, yeah, it's a Red Ale. Let's dig in, I'm stoked. Hopefully this doesn't blow out my palate. Cheers. Oh. Mm. This would be one that John absolutely loves. It's got a fantastic multi body, great hops. It's, it's bitter, it's not overly bitter. It's actually more sweet than bitter, I would say. The malts definitely take charge on this. 8.7%, super easy drinking. Holy crap. I mean, I'm a beer junkie. I'm not a blood junkie, but I'll drink blood junkie because it's beer and beer is good. Yummy. All right guys, so we've tried all the beers here at Three Weavers. It's time for us to tell you which ones our favorites were. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with Justin. You wanna tell him what your favorite was? Why do I always gotta start first? All right, well, <laughs> when it comes to great beers, Three Weavers, you can't go wrong. I mean, you have so many great IPAs, you have great dark beers, but what's the one that really stands out to me? The Seafarer. Look at that, it's crisp, it's clean, it's just perfectly see-through. 4.9%, amazing Kolsch style beer. And you can tell, once you take a sip of it, why it, why it won a silver medal at the Great American Beer Fest. This thing is delicious, it's light, it's refreshing. It's everything you want in a summer day and a summer beer. And the perfect embodiment of life on the beach in SoCal. And that's why it's my favorite. Well done, guys. Yes. Jeff. So, for me, there were a lot of IPAs that we had today. Some were a little bit too danky for my taste, but there were some solid West Coast beers. Um, obviously, the collab uh, with Green Cheek, still friends after all these beers. That one was awesome. Expatriate was another one that was a real pleasant surprise. You get that pineapple, mango, like the tropical. Uh, flavors in the body of the beer, but it still holds true to a West Coast style in the rest of it. So it's kind of cool because it's like a hazy meets West Coast. And I don't know, it, it's just, it was really, really good. But here's the thing. I heard about this beer through social media. I saw pictures for the, like, artwork for this beer and was just blown away. I mean, this is the first time I've seen something for, from Three Weavers that didn't just have the simple like Celtic knot design. You know, like that's normally what you see with Three Weavers. Anyways, I digress. I chose Blood Junkie because apparently I'm more than a beer junkie, I'm a blood junkie. And it's a fantastic red ale. It's ABV uh, is misleading because it tastes delicious. I could drink it all day. I'm done talking. Jacob, how about you? Now, I do feel like I have to say a disclaimer in that we did all try a lot of dank IPAs, and as great as those were, I could definitely tell that my palate was starting to fatigue a bit. <laughs> Uh, how pops I was ingesting. <laughs> Suck it up, wussy. <laughs> Maybe it's a man's drink. <laughs> so, that being said, the two beers that I felt stood out to me the most were actually the ones that had probably the least amount of hops. Uh, go figure. Um, one of them was their coffee stout, which I thought was really great. Yes. A great coffee character. Oh, I forgot Solid to bring coffee. that up. And yeah, it was definitely South South Bounder coffee yes. stout. Yeah, it that is, was fantastic. It is more than an honorable mention. It's pretty much a tie for the one I picked. But the one I did end up picking was Seafarer the Kolsch. Copycat. It's just a, such a crisp and clear beer, and I think my mouth was just thanking me for having it. <laughs> it was such easy drinking, and I was like, you know what? Today, that's just it's doing it. <laughs> I want easy drinking today, and this is it. Do you ever go out for beers with your friends and feel like you're just stuck in the middle? 
Do you ever go out with friends and one of them's trying to peer pressure you into drinking some big old fancy, oh, let me get the 18% with blah, That's blah, blah. That's me all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why I'm going for the Colts, because I did that to him this weekend and now I need to recover from myself. <laughs> this is rehab in a glass. Yeah. <laughs> this is rehab. I will say Seafarer is probably one of the most refreshing uh, Kolsch's I've had in a really long time. Super, super amazing for that beer style. And the good news is, is if you live in Southern California, you can probably get your hands on this. Pretty and a easy. lot of bottle shops, a yep. lot of grocery stores are probably going to be carrying Seafarer, so go ahead and try it out. As for Blood Junkie, this is a limited release. You're probably not going to see it anywhere unless you come to the brewery. It's worth coming to. Same with Southbounder. And I apologize, Three Weavers. I forgot to mention that in my statement. Southbounder was a very close second. I literally stood in front of the line trying to decide between Blood Junkie and Southbounder. And Blood Junkie won. But I tell you what, man. If... Alcohol didn't get you drunk, and it just tasted real good. I would have Southbounder every morning for breakfast. An ice Pour it in your cereal. cold pitcher of Southbounder. Ice cold pitcher of Southbounder, that's what I need. So yeah, anyways, there you go guys. So we've reviewed all the beers. We told you which ones our favorites were. We're just gonna kick back and drink some more beer. Cheers. 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 Boop, boop, boop. Well, guys, that's going to do it here at Three Weavers in Inglewood. Thanks so much to everyone that showed us the great hospitality and the amazing beers. We really love playing with the dogs that we're visiting as well. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> love little puppies. Yeah. And we really love the beer as well. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure that you give us a thumbs up. It helps us get more attention and gives us more of a reason to bring you guys great content. Make sure that you also share this with your friends to get the word out and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, if there's a brewery you'd like to see us visit next, make sure that you list it in the comments below because we want to go there and we want to let you know what we think of those beers as well. Now. Thank you, Jacob from Craft Cascade. If you guys want to check his channel out, the information's also in the description below. And uh, man, great beers, great friends, great times. And we'll see you next time on Let's Have Some Beer. Cheers. <laughs>